I want to. I'm just saying, Steve does not want to take you to court. The amount of evidence you got, the videos you got, the way you got the timeline laid out. As I was reading this and looking at the videos, I don't know how this nigga is not in jail already. Uh, it's Storm Show. Hey, it's Storm Show. This has showed me that you can buy the law. No matter what you do, you can buy the law. I never thought I would be in a case like that. But now I see for myself, a person can buy it. So let's let's in formally introduce you to the people, Miss Essie Berry. Let people know um, who you are and what you do. Um, I'm a civil rights activist for over 30 years. I have a 100% winning rate. Um, if I don't, it's because I walked away and I chose not to do anything with the case. Um, I have two sons, a 36 and a 38 year old son. Um, both of those are my kings. I love my baby death. I got a host of grandbabies. Um, I, I, if people don't know, I'm the widow of Fred Rerun Berry from the 1970 sitcom. What's happening? Hey, hey, hey. Um, <laughs> I, I married him in 1999 and he died in 2003. And unfortunately, when he died, I married him October the 22nd on my birthday. He died October the 21st, 2003. Oh. So he died one day before my birthday and our wedding anniversary. So I knew that God wanted me to be um, his widow. Yeah, to so see him as he transitioned out. Yeah. Right. But, you know, I'm looking at the dates, though, uh, Mr. Storm. I married him on the 22nd of October in 99. He died one day before my birthday in 2003. So on the 22nd, he died on the 21st in 2003. So that was one day before our wedding anniversary and one day before my birthday. God knew that I was going to be his widow to keep his legacy going on because we got other things, you know, going on in the background. Absolutely. Um, I am a Southern peach through and through. Um, I've been married a couple of times, as people know, but also like right now, I, and I don't know if it's all because of what Steve had put me through and all that I went through because I had to get back to who I am, but I'm a born again version. I want to say that, put that right out there. I'm 53 years old. Oh, you, you look good. You look good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, and I chose that for right now because sometimes they say, because you're a beautiful woman, you got to sleep with this man, that man, we all this. I just broke the trend to all that because beauty is an aging in numbers, but it's really within the inside what I really look at. But I chose to just keep my body, my mind, myself, my spirit to me till I figure out who I was because I had went through all this. And I can say by me doing that, it has helped me in a great way. So I have a lot of people asking me on platforms at my dating. I don't have a man. I'm looking for one though. <laughs> now that comes. And okay. so basically, as a civil rights activist, I've been all over the world as far as, and I don't have to leave my home. I have people calling me from everywhere. I'm a master cosmetologist for over 30 years. I love doing hair. I just put that on the back burner because I like fighting for people more so better than anything. So. Here I am now in the mix of a Harvey drama that we've getting ready to get into. And it's because my civil rights activist instincts kicked in. Um, let's take it back to the beginning, you know, so people can know. We've heard Jimmy speak, you know, Marjorie's ex-husband. Um, we've heard Marjorie. Oh. First time we met. Memphis. Where? At a comedy club. Okay. How did we meet? Tell them. Tell them exactly how we met. Tell them first thing I said to you. Tell them how we met. I was late. You were late. Came to a comedy club. She came down front with her girlfriend. Yeah. When I saw her, I quit breathing. He stopped the show, actually. I okay. wasn't even talking. So I came with my girlfriend. I was late. I thought he was going to give me the business because he got real quiet. And he was just staring at me. So I was waiting on him to, you know, how they, OK, what time your tickets say, you know. I thought I was going to become part of the show. Uh, so he stopped the show and he just kept staring at me. So now it's kind of awkward because it's a little bitty comedy club. Hey, hey, it wasn't that little. <laughs> okay. So you know a comedy club is small if y'all are sitting at tables. It was a 300 seater. That's a comedy club. Probably was the biggest in the whole Southeast. Okay. <laughs> so that's Steve's version of the comedy club. It was actually at the Rose Bowl. It was huge. 
All right. So what? All right. So it was a small comedy club. So I came late. Came down front with my girlfriend. Um, we were our seats were right here at the front, right by the stage. So we were sitting here. The stage was here. So he's just quiet. He just keeps staring at me. So I'm waiting on him to make me a part of the show so we can get on with the show. So he stayed quiet so long staring at me. Now everybody in the club is looking at me. And so he finally realized, okay, I got to say something. He was like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know who this is, but I'm going to marry her. Truthful. So I feel like with you, we can get to the bottom of everything and really tell the untold story of Steve Harvey. So... Let's take it back from the beginning. How did you even get involved with Mary Harvey? <clears throat> By me being Reron's widow, I had a girlfriend who wanted to do a show. So I can make a phone call and I can say, hello, my name is Essie Berry. I'm the widow of Fred Reron Berry and do the whole nine yards. They're going to listen. So I contacted some producers um, going back and forth. I had two Caucasian agents that wanted to sign me. I signed with one in Virginia, a North Carolina, and one in Georgia. And then I talked to a gentleman named Aaron Long from VH1. We were getting ready to do a reality show, Widow Wives and Exes. I was going to have me as Rerun's Widow, all Fred exes, all Rerun exes. And then I wanted some other people because I already knew these exes, his exes, were going to come to me foul because we done went through things in the past, Rerun's exes. So then I said, let me go find some people that I think will be good for the show. Um, come on, Essie. The gentleman who was married to Jack A from 227, he do hair. Y'all know who I'm Oh, talking. I know who you're talking about. I can't think of his name, though. Okay, he was one. Um, uh, Mary Harvey. I was going to speak to Bernie Mac's wife. I specked out to Char, the one who was married to Britney Spears, old man. Oh, That's go. it. Yeah. We, so we're going to be widow wives and exes. We're going to have men on there as well. That was going to be messy as hell. Yes, it was, baby. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, yes, yes. But it would have been spectacular for me to hear what rerun went through with these exes. So being with that, with rerun and these people, we were just going to make a mark. But there was a lot of stuff going on behind closed doors about Fred rerun. So I was going to put all that on the mainstream when we got on the show. To my belief, when I went to go find Mary, I had to find her through a girl named Shanae Hall, if I'm not mistaken. I found Mary within like 48 to 72 hours. We went back and forth for a minute. We started talking. And we just went back and forth. And she wanted to do the show. But then she said, I can't because I'm on a gag order. Now, I'm a civil rights activist. A gag order means to shut up and don't say anything. That sparked my attention. Mind yeah. you, Mary had did videos in, what, 2011 and 2009? I never saw those videos. I never knew anything about Mary Harvey's case to that night when I found her and we started talking. You say, let's get together and talk about it. Let's meet you and the present wife. Let's go on the radio together. Let's go on the TV together. He's in 60 Markets. Let's have that conversation on his 60 Markets. It don't matter to me. I'm open for it. But you have to think about the people that are not willing to talk about the issues but want to talk about the legal side, what I'm going to stop this person from saying. Okay. I don't have to defend what I say, because it's the truth. This is nothing. But why is it in general? Because we have a man of power and authority, and he used that in the court. In a small town in Texas, he was able to manipulate this entire situation to his benefit, and it does happen. It happens in our community. It's happening in this country, and it touches every woman every race, every religion, every creed, it is happening. And the, the thing about it that's so unbelievable is that it did happen. When you're talking about a man who's prog progressive, who's productive, um, who has a position in our community, it's like stunning, it's like shocking. Like, how could this be? Think about how quickly he moved forward from me to Marjorie. Uh, that was disturbing. Um, with all the emails and uh, the text messages and the different things that were um, 
that I was finding out about. I thought the least that he could do, make me whole at the end of it. He, he left. He just left, walked out the door. Once he realized that uh, I was going to divorce him, he walked out the door. He had a shoulder bag. He walked out. Went right to New York to our apartment that we had there, which I never got to see, by the way. But And then she joined him there. Marjorie joined him there. Now, I never saw those videos, okay, to after the fact when Mary, when I got in touch with Mary. So I'm telling you, I knew nothing about the Harvey anything until my reality show was going to come on. Mm. So trying to get Mary involved, she told me some things, but she was very, like, stand backish, And I was like, so why is she acting like this? So I said, tell you what. Since you're afraid and you feel like it's a gag order or whatever, and I got those letters, if you would like for me to send them to you Please. from Steve Harvey's lawyer, Bobby Edmond, I do things by the book. So I sent her a letter and said, yo, I would like to know if there's any reservations about Mary Harvey doing this case, I mean, doing this show or whatever. They didn't like it. And then his lawyer talked stupid to me. And then I got stupid back. So then it was a conflict of interest. And then it almost act, act like it was a war. So now you don't ruffle my feathers because why you got an attitude? Because we want to do a reality show. What is so harmful and so damaging that I asked you a question? And you, when you see the, the letters, it came from Miss Bobby Edmond. Miss mm. Bobby Edmond is an attorney out of the state of Texas, which is one of Steve Harvey's attorney. But at this time, that's who the lawyer was while we were affiliated with this part of it. So we went back and forth for a minute. Nobody wanted to say anything. So if people don't know it, when Mary divorced Steve, he divorced in 30 days. I've never seen someone. He said the papers were divorced in 30 days. Okay. But they but 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 now we know that it was some it was some it's it was it was some uh what they call it when you force somebody signature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now now let's make it clear. So Mary Harvey was the second wife of Steve Harvey. Yes. Before that, it was Marcia Marcia. or Marcia? Marcy, yeah. Marcy. It was alleged it was somebody else before Marcy. Is that true? I'm, I, I haven't seen those papers to take account to say that for sure, but it could have been because how these celebrities lie and they hide so much information. Okay, so I'm not sure. So allegedly Steve Harvey has seen quite a few of my videos and he wants to put out a gag order on me because of my knowledge about his real life. Now let's start with the first fact. Steve Harvey was not married three times. It was actually four times that he was married. Now, he got married back in 1978 when he was around 20 or 21. And the lady he was briefly married to, no other information is made available about her, only her name, which is Carol Fulton. And they married in California, which ironically was just four years after he graduated from Glenville High School in 1974 at the age of 17. And he then went and attended Kent University and West Virginia University. Now, it looks like during college or right after college, he quickly fell in love and got married. Now, he didn't uh, perform his first stand-up comedy performance until 1985. But it's just amazing how Carol Fulton, now named Carol Yvonne Lasley, was quickly scrubbed from his bio to appear that his first wife was Marcia Harvey. So I'm not sure, but, but I know about these three, the three m and M. He should have bought an m and M factory. That's what he should have did because he showed like m and M's, okay? And what what else do all the do do Mark do Marcy and Mary and Marjorie also have in common? They're all Libras. And they Mary told me, Mary said, they all got this M name for show, M A R. All of them saw M A R. I know that. But Mary said that Steve will sleep with anyone, but he will marry a Libra. A Libra is intelligent. We blend with all the zodiac signs. We are the only sign more so that is not a, a animal or stat or something. We are a, a, a scale of justice. You'll see Libra and it's a scale. It's either tilted. We either hot, we cold. Don't get us off balance because then you got an issue. But Libras are very loyal, you know what I'm saying, to the person that they're loyal with. So if you done did something with a Libra, they're going to ride with you to the end till you can't do no more. But mm -hmm. we have different types of Libras, like no disrespect to anybody. 
The first wife, she a quiet Libra. She want to push around ass Libras. <laughs> Mary, Mary is a type, do or die until it's time to die. And then she's going to like back off. You know what I'm saying? So she, you saw the paperwork. She, a gang, she tried to be a gangster. But at the end of this, you went and you had to sit down because the man kept shutting you up. Yeah. Margie is a buyout Libra. You can go buy her and say, go sit down. Whoop, and she'll go sit down because you can buy her because that's what she's about. Bling, bling, bling. Mm -hmm. Bitches, it's mad. <laughs> mm. I'm a Libra. That is that scale of justice. I'm on the cup of being a Scorpio and that Libra. So you can't scare me. You can't buy me. You can't intimidate me. And you can't make me do what you want me to do. So I outweigh all those Libras put together. And Mary mm. said that she had never seen a woman come at Steve like all this had transpired and went on. Okay. So you it know got what? Not, not, now that I think about it, the only up, I don't think I've ever seen a woman really check Steve the way he needs to be checked. He shook now and he's been shaking. I, I, I would I would have to say you're the only one. Even when even when him and Monique had that conversation, she she didn't check him the way he should have been checked, in my opinion. Let me tell you how I know I shook him. And I told them when they start stalking me, because we're gonna go back, y'all. But since we have this conversation, um, I told them before it's over, I'm gonna be embedding your mind, your body, your spirit, and your soul. Why that is, is because I know all the dirty see. Because I'm an activist, and I don't know how it's possible, but I can tell you every dirty detail in Mary and Steve Harvey's divorce case. Mm -hmm. They said, if I put the sealed documents up here, they're going to put me in jail. Then shit, if you put me in jail, then everybody's going to go to hell. Because I'm getting ready to tell what we're going to go. Because, see, I'm, I'm Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks. I'm not going to let you take my seat and put me to the back of the bus, and I know I should have been at the front. Absolutely. I'm not going to sit up here and say I got a dream, because I don't really dream like that. I make shit come true. I don't say something like that. It's a promise. And that's what I'm coming for you. So to know that he tried to shut up Tasha K, Lionel B, Geneva um, Closet, a girl named Chicago Talk. And it was a couple more people that he tried to gag because he didn't want them talking to me. I know that I'm inferior to you and you don't want to face me. Hmm. But that's he wrote a book. He wrote a book about women. Think like a man, act like a woman, act like a man, whatever it was. He should have took his own shit and just went back somewhere. Because you got the you you act like you say you got balls, but you was acting like a woman in all this. Because you put Mary in a mental ward and, and she was, I mean, she had had a mental breakdown. Steve got his lawyer to go to court and take Mary out of a mental ward and then take her to court. He didn't even show up. He was go kicking it with Margie. I got documents to show where Steve bought Margie a house in 2003. And until here recently, they were living in the house that was in Margie's name. And it mm. said Margie Harvey. Margie Harvey did not become Margie Harvey to 2007. You say, they say. But I got documents to show otherwise. And there was this house in 2003 in Margie Harvey's name. So how does that work? What was what was the fa what 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 clicked that that made you say you know what I got to help Mary out? Nah, I'm trying not to get emotional, but I don't want people to think like if I cry, just let me cry. But sometimes I felt like I wasn't supposed to cry, but I'm not going to right now. But anytime I may, and let me say before I say anything else, I don't do a ledge. Anything I say, I can prove, whether it's video, whether it's my testimony, whether it's a lie detector, whether it's in black and white. Essie Bear will never say alleged nothing because I don't do alleged. That means it may have not happened. I don't do may not happen. I'm telling you what happened. I contacted several lawyers because Steve said he divorced Mary in 2005. He divorced her in 30 days, but they had over at least $30 million of assets. So all that time, he continued to try to divorce Mary from when he married Margie all the way up to 2009. So by writing what Mary said, this stuff that would happen, it still should be hers because he was dividing assets that he never gave Mary her half because he gave it to Margie. Mm. So what I did, I started calling all these lawyers. There was one lawyer in particular that handled Mary and Steve Harvey's case. His name is Ricky Anderson. He also, I showed you, had a site on here too. Okay. 
um, and that site. And I got him saying that he's that person. But if you go back and you look at something called um, Steve Harvey, con job, smoking gun, divorce con job, and you have those documents, that told what they did. So Ricky Anderson and, 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 and Steve Harvey and Mary had the same lawyer. So Ricky Anderson was Mary Harvey's attorney and Steve, which would have been a conflict of interest. Yeah. Because how is Mary going to get hers if you his friend? And he a dude, so you know he ain't going to get Mary what she's supposed to rightfully deserve. True. But that insults to injuries, when I got to start seeing all the documents, he not only was her divorce lawyer, he was a peace sign something to take her power of attorney. And they also had something with a conservatorship. Let's go open the documents up because they have me in a case and trying to gag me because of what I'm telling you right now. They have been trying to gag me since 2013. And how did that work out for you? Because that means shut up. I'm 53 years old. I don't know how to shut or up. Okay. I don't do that. So how does that work? So what I'm saying now is that way, if you got a POA, your attorney, and you took a conservatorship, you could take over someone's life with that. You could take over their whole identity. That's how they took Winton. So I start calling all these lawyers and I got all their paperwork. ABC is about eight lawyers, all Caucasian, which to me were bought out because all these people were in on Mary case from 2005 to 2009. Steve got married in 2007. So why are you still divine assets when Margie's sitting right here? Also in those divorce papers, I saw something called a squash motion. Look it up. Squash motion mean it said that Margie could not talk in the divorce. They said they wanted her to shut up. But there was a statement made in those documents saying that Steve was broke when he was divorcing Mary. And Margie said she funded everything because she got a loan or had some businesses. So was that drug money? Was that Jimmy money? Who money was that? Since you said Steve was broke in 2009, I think it was. But okay. you helped him pay his bills. That's in the court documents. If you change it now, it would really be too late because I still have the sealed documents either way it may go. And I looked up what squash motion in a divorce means. Ah, so it's oh, it's also when they try to decide if they're going to keep something private or not. Boom. Boom. Oh, they wanted to basically make her ass disappear from, from the earth. Correct. And if you look up gag order, it means that you're gagged. And usually when you say a gag, that means to silence someone. And they seal this divorce case like it was a president or something. When you seal a case, that means there's knowledge in that case that you do not want someone else to know about. What yep. is the storm? The term for uh, gag order, the term for when the judge prohibits the attorneys the parties or witnesses in a penny lawsuit or prosecution from talking about the case of which, which means she would not have been able to do a show interviews, write a book, anything. Right. And then, but that would have allowed him to create whatever narrative he wanted to. Correct. And he did just that. Cause mm -hmm. if y'all remember in 2011, nobody believed Mary when she went public with all this. No, so no. You asked me a question. So now I done got all these white lawyers involved thinking it was just Ricky Anderson. And a lot of this stuff I found out through the years doing an investigation as an activist. But going through the paperwork and I got like eight lawyers, all on Caucasian. I seen some paperwork. And it said child abuse. I said, mm, hold up. Let's talk it about it. So I asked Mary. What happened? She clammed up. She didn't say nothing. I said, now we got a problem because I'm a civil rights activist, but I'm also a mandated reporter. I advocate for the homeless and I, for foster kids because I was that at one time. I used to work with foster kids, too. So I know. So you so. Yeah. So, you know, and, and it is it's, it's bad. But when you I've been a foster child in the system from mm. being abused, I was a, a person who was abused by my mother. So let me tell you, show you the, the pattern. So when we get. It's going to make a point. My mother cut my hair with butcher knives, beat me with um, two by four, shot us with guns, threw us down flights of stairs. We were considered one of the worst child abuse cases in Detroit, Michigan. There was a woman who knew it. She never said anything. So when I saw that case about Winton, 
I just I, I couldn't even think because I said, is it is this what is this what's happening to him? Because it was mm. really, really bad. So then I got to an attorney, which I can give you Paget, because Paget emailed me. Paget, the lawyer Paget, Duro Paget emailed me some paperwork because I needed to know about Mary's case. In this paperwork, it showed that there was supposed to be a custody agreement between Mary and Steve. He violated the whole custody. He never let Mary saw Winton. But in 2009, now I'm 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 in 2013, y'all, when I find this out. I look at the paperwork. And I get the paperwork and I still couldn't find out what was going on. So now I know something has been covered up. So I called the Plano police station. I should have had that police report right here in front of me, but we can at least tell them the number whenever you want to put it out there. Okay. There's a police report that was written by Plano police department in 2009, if I'm not mistaken, Mary never was allowed to get that, that, that order. Mary went to the police station because what happened? Something went on with Winton in Atlanta, Georgia. Steve beat Winton with a sorority paddle, which is about that thick, and a belt buckle. He didn't use the leather part. He used the belt buckle. Two weeks later, Steve Harvey flew Winton to Texas, and Mary saw all the bruises on her baby's back. Go ahead. Oh, Mary saw all the bruises on her child's back. And then... There's the police report. So police report number says 2008-001-99568. You want to read it or you want me to just keep going? Uh -uh. I'll read the first part, then we'll keep going. It okay. says, upon arrival, Officer Carter met with reporting party Mary Harvey, uh, who stated that on October 17, 2008, at 2030 hours, she picked up her son, Winton, from... The airport, Miss Harvey told Miss Harvey stated that she and her son went to their residence, at which time Winton told her that approximately two weeks ago he had received a whipping from his father, Broderick Harvey. Um, and then I'll let you go from there. No, nah, keep reading this storm. Let's go and finish it on out because I'm gonna check okay. in on this. Let's go. Let's okay. do it. Okay, okay. Uh it's a, and, and by the way, for everybody that's watching all of the, the documents. The videos, the pictures, I have to blur them for YouTube, unfortunately, but they will be available on the Patreon or if you become a YouTube member, it's going to be on one big slideshow. So don't worry, you'll be able to get it. Um, Ms. Harvey told me that Winton has sustained bruises on his legs and buttocks from the whipping. Now, when they say whipping, that sounds like he was beat like a Hebrew slave. Correct. Uh, I then met with Winton Harvey, who stated that approximately two weeks ago. While at his home, his father, Broderick, had received a telephone call from his teacher, and his teacher stated that he had not turned in and lied about turning in some homework. Winton stated that his father then got upset and gave him a whipping for lying to the teacher. Winton stated that during the whipping, his father whipped him with a belt and a paddleboard. Why the hell do you got to beat this boy with a belt and a paddleboard? Like, like, like that's some, that's some like slavery stuff. That's what I wanted you to see. Now we talk about a man who is on family feud. He's supposed to be a family man. What was wrong with just beating the baby with a belt if you just want to whoop him? But you took a board and then they gagged Mary and made her be solid behind it. So there's the proof. I'm not worried about going to jail. You gonna put me in jail because I told that you beat your kid and it's a crime? Then nigga, come get me because it was wrong. And they made Mary be silent. From 2009, when that happened, all the way up until I came on the case in 2013, until that paper that you just saw emerge. I asked for the paper. I told him, check this. My name is Essie Bear. I'm a civil rights activist. I don't know if Steve Harvey paid y'all or not to hide this uh, police report. I'm going to give you 24 hours to give me the police report. I'm going to call the FBI on Plano Police, and I'm going to tell them that you helped him cover it up. I got it in two hours. Mary couldn't get it at all, and she was the mother of this case so he had paid off the police department and the same woman that mary went to go get it to try to protect her son in 2009 guess what that's the same woman who gave me the police report see how mm. god will make your enemy your footstool you that's understand true. what i'm saying so all the people who said that it didn't happen he just read the case number there's a police report to winter's abuse are oh, you fine um i remained quiet the whole time when winter was coming up 
So when I found about this in 2013 and I start trying to go public with it, Steve Harvey also tried to gag me and put a gag order on me and start trying to find out where I was to silence me. I do have that paperwork, too, where I tried to take a restraining order out on Steve Harvey and the judge granted it in 2013. Mm -hmm. But they said they didn't get the restraining order. OK, so when I found out that Winton had been abused, it concerned me so severely. I didn't think about my show. I didn't think about a reality show. I didn't think about nothing. I thought about Winton. I thought about how Winton, like, what, what did he feel? What was he going through? And you remember when you hear on Ricky Smiley, let me clear this, clarify this. When they said Mary put Winton on a plane, when you when he finished reading that report in there, they snatched Winton out of Mary's hands because Mary was trying to get a restraining order against Steve Harvey so he wouldn't take her baby. Some white men in a in a, a limousine showed up at Mary's house after Winton had already been mentally and emotionally and physically abused, snatched Winton out of Mary's hands. What's she going to do? And they took Winton and put him in the car and took him to the airport. That's how he got on that plane by himself. Where everybody said Mary put him on a plane by herself. Mary didn't have no money to put Winton on the plane. See, he had him put on the plane. And then when he did that, Winton got to the airport and he ran. And he called Mary and said, please, mama, come get me. Please don't let this happen to me. Please just take me somewhere. Mary had to sit down as a mother. And explain to her baby why she could not save him. And how do you think that made me feel to know as an activist, a mother, that this had went on with this woman's child because it was Steve Harvey? And after that time in 2009, when he was put back on the plane, when they lied and said Mary did it, Steve did it, Mary never saw her kid again. And she got here and there, but there was a, a order for Steve to take anger management. Let's do this. Steve never took anger management. There was also a document for Margie, Steve, Mary to do counseling and they do parenting through the children. Mary would have them on certain times and Mary would have them certain times. Steve never let that happen. They were too busy taking pictures and doing little in the windows online. Go look at Margie when, when the baby was little, smiling, hugging on them. So she did what she felt like she was trying to make Mary upset. Because of the simple fact, you took the only thing that she loved that was connected to Steve and you just snatched her son. And you wonder why you getting the karma that you get now. Same thing that you did with Jimmy Townsend. Yep, you yep, not, you tried not, to split a family up because not, you wanted to be the queen bee. Now everybody see who you are behind closed doors. Now it's up in the light. And it ain't been through yet. It's just beginning. Because God said, do not touch his anointed. And that's what you did. And then you allow Steve to beat his son and then you help cover it up. Margie should be in jail too for child abuse because she knew Winter was beaten. Well, and I, why I said put that police court out. So what the fuck y'all gonna come get me now? Because I showed you 100% proof. Everybody said, I ain't seen a police report. I'm not sure. That's alleged. Essie Berry don't do alleged. If I can't come with the truth, I would rather not say anything at all. Yeah, that, I mean that, that the, that's the police report plain 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 as day. It should also be reported that Winton was beat so bad that he was not able to urinate for some time and had blood in his urine for was it a couple weeks? Two at least. To Mary took him to the emergency room. At least two weeks. So he never I, took him to the hospital. See, Steve didn't take him to the hospital, and he's what he tried to wait till Winton was healed up. But Mary saw the bruise because when Winter got there, he couldn't pee. And then she CSI, and I seen the pictures. Mm. I seen the pictures. The pictures, when, when Storm said that he was beaten like a Hebrew slave, Winter back was open, and it was wounds on it. And to see that and knowing it was somebody you admire, because I like Steve Harvey. I liked him on TV. I liked him on Family Feud. But I ain't like shit about him after I saw what Winter Back looked like. I actually had a meltdown behind that. I couldn't even think straight. I couldn't even sleep. And that was even my baby. That was someone else's child. But to know that he had went through this and you're going to gag her, you're going to silence her, but trying to stand for her baby. And then Margie, pimp, 
Pimping ain't easy, Margie, but you did it, huh? You pimped this dude so good that you snatched his kid, allowed him to beat him, and you helped cover it up. That's what Margie Harvey did. And no one said nothing. So who was supposed to be there for Winton? Since y'all just took Winton away from the only mother that he knew. And Mary has an older son named Stephen. Let's and talk Stephen, about it. That Mary has an older son named Stephen that is not related to Steve Harvey at all. His name just happens to also be Stephen. Um, let's talk about the allegations. Which ones? Well, huh. The one about the oldest son? About the oldest son, yes, ma'am. Me and Mary was in a conversation. And, and I've talked to her oldest son, too. So if y'all come get me, you're going to have to go get Mary. And you would have to go get Steven. But it would really make sense why you put a, try to put a gag order on her and you never mention her son's name. Because Steven said, and Mary said, let me, let me, let me, before I say this, before I go to the allegations, when Mary saw what I'm going to tell you guys, she should have took her kids and left in. Mary says Steve used to have a room in the house and it had some kind of digital lock on it. They had to figure out the code. One day he went out of town. It was Stephen, her niece, and Mary, and they figured out the code on the door. When they figured out the code on the door, I said, well, Mary, when you got in there, what was in there? She said, hell, a big, dirty desk, uh, and it was dirty with a with a computer on it. She said they had a big old jar of Vaseline in the, in the drawer, and she said it was $6,000 with one. I was like, damn, nigga, like we having a little freak show up in the 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 area i said so mary did you look on the computer she said yes i did i said so what did you see she said men i said what i said what are you talking about she said i said what what you mean men she said naked men i got it on tape so don't play with me naked men i said really i said well, what they look like mary she said hell why i care what they look like Essie? she said they was fat cross-eyed skinny slim whatever <laughs> that told me that you looked that told me that she looked right. Uh, okay. She said cross-eyed. You had to be like this and then it was cross-eyed. Okay. So come on now. Okay. <laughs> this your husband and you just discovered this. You're going to look at everything. And you, and she, I, well, she said the man was cross-eyed storm. I already knew she looked at it. So they were skinny. They was fat. So, and Mary said, I said, so what you saying, Mary? She don't want to hurt Winton. She didn't want Winton to be embarrassed. But she said he got a gay appetite, but he kept it on low. See what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So it was okay for him to do. And I, that's what was told to me. And I can put the video up if y'all want me to. But I, I, I'm sure that I didn't want to put it out because Mary didn't want her son to be offended because she heard her say, he say, Mary say that your father has a gay appetite for men. But let's go further if he doesn't. Mary had left her son, Stephen, at home with Steve. Say Steve was in the garage. He had his shirt unbuttoned, his pants unzipped, and he told Mary's son, bring your motherfucking ass here, boy. Come here, boy. You know that's how he talk. Come here, boy. Bring your motherfucking ass here. He tried to grab the son, and the son said, you out your motherfucking mind. You got me messed up, nigga, and ran upstairs and called Mary. So well, you, you were trying to molest Mary's son because you got your pants and stuff down, your shirt unzipped. What are you doing? Mary said after that, she started watching them. She didn't want to leave her kids. She was scared to leave Winton around them too. Because if you try her son, why won't you try your baby too? I'm mm. just saying. So Mary said that he tried to molest her oldest son. And that is one reason why I feel like today that you tried to gag her. That would be a good reason to gag someone. All this dirt coming out about all these celebrities now, y'all all got y'all secrets. But then y'all play with these babies and y'all do all the stuff you think it ain't going to never come out. Babies get grown. And I respect Steven to the fullest because he didn't try to destroy Steve's reputation. He don't even know how did he destroy Steven. Steven really loves Steve. Y'all ain't never heard this man say nothing about Steven. And Steven grew up with Steve because he knew what he had done. And he knew if anybody found out, Steve going to rock with his mama because Steven knows the truth.
But instead of people in the world trying to listen to the truth, they were too busy trying to gag Mary so everybody can make money. The judges can get paid off behind closed doors. The lawyers get paid off. And well, Mary is sitting up there dying in silence because she know this man has violated her, her son, and Winton. So let's go, Winton. At 13 years old, Mary got to see Winton. It was, it was going to be on his birthday. Mm. I think she said he came with his oldest brother from the first wife. They Robert showed up. Junior, Mary, yes. Okay. They showed up at Mary's place. Mary said went and he had his little hair blonde on top a little bit. She didn't like the blonde. She told him that. I don't know what that blonde means, but I'm saying. Went to say, Mom, I'm not the same little boy you knew back then a long time ago. I'm not that little boy anymore. A lot of things have changed. I say, so Mary, when you when he said that, what did you say? She said, I didn't know what to say. She said, because I knew that my son had been violated in some kind of way. She knew what that meant. Yes, yeah, she, of course. Do I have her saying what it meant? Yeah. Yeah. So if anything come up, you want to come get me, you better go get married before you come get me, because you can't, you can't. And I'm, I'm going to take a lie detector test. Will Steve, will Margie? I will. We can do a we could do a lie detector test on your show, Storm, but I would still pass because I have no reason to lie on these people because I don't know. I got mixed up in some Harvey bullshit and it was messier than I ever thought it would be. Not knowing that these people would blackmail you, lie, steal, cheat, whatever they had to do to keep their legacy. And they destroyed families. Margie, you sitting up there buying a purse that luck a damn plane, but you ain't worried about your kids or you ain't worried about how Steve beat this baby because you wouldn't worry because you could go shopping. But Winter still sitting up there with the bruises with inside himself now. And nobody can't tell me. No matter what y'all say or how they said it, I went to, he's damaged from this. He, of course he is. I mean, he was, he was taken from his mother. Um, you know, even just who knows how Marjorie really is behind closed doors. Cause I mean, come on now. Then in addition to that, what I noticed now, number one, Winston lives in Dubai now and which is also interesting, but I noticed in any, Picture video with Steve Harvey. He seems very uncomfortable. It's not a it's not a loving father son type of energy, right. even if that's what they want to portray. Right. And I'm so, sorry, and so when you tell me, we've seen the police reports, and when we look at everything that has happened, it's believable. It, it it it's believable. The public will get confused because they don't know all the wives. Everybody's not in the spotlight. People are not going to take the time to do the research. Right. Even how like Steve go Steve Steve Harvey goes by Steve Harvey, but his full name is Broderick Stephen Harvey. And so you will get confused on Steve versus Stephen for Broderick. Well, who's Broderick Jr. and a lot of people don't even know about the twins, Carly and um Brandy. And Brandy, you know, they 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 just know about Lori. Okay, let's speak on that. Let's speak on Lori Harvey. Let me okay, we're gonna speak on Lori, then I get the twins. So let, let me let me do the twins first before I get to Lori. Okay, okay. okay. The twins. If you guys go back and look from 2013 when I exposed Steve and I was going through all this, and then he put me in a paper. Because after I found out everything that went on, Steve Harvey lawyers went to court, I mean, went to the media, and they said I was a co-conspirator and an extortionist with no tangible evidence. Please look at both of those and they'll tell you what it means. Conspired mean that I plotted against him. Extortion mean I gave him something tangible and demanded something from him. That was never proven, but Fox Media News, they printed that. But if you go back from 2013, you don't see nothing about Steve. You don't see nothing about the twins. You don't see nothing about his first son. You don't see nothing. So in 2013, I exposed him. And when I exposed him and I told on him, then they blackmailed me and said, if I tell what I'm saying now, that they would put Mary in prison for 28 years. I have a letter. I'll send it to you, Storm. I wrote Bobby Edmund again and said, y'all not going to get away with this. 2014, I have the letter. I said that murderers and rapists get less time than that. And you're trying to put Mary in jail because she told the truth about you beating her son. 
She told the truth about you lying on her. She told the truth. And Mary had a restraint, tried to get a restraining order against Steve twice. And they denied it both times. This before mm -hmm. any of this happened. That's in them sealed documents. Okay. And then after I found out went on, I started posting videos all on the internet in 2013. But what happened was when I confronted Steve Harvey's lawyer, I got that lawyer. She said, Miss Barry, give me 48 hours. I gave her 48 hours. They set Mary up. They went to her house while Steve Harvey was sitting in front of Obama. Y'all remember when he was getting inaugurated, all that was in? And Steve Harvey met with Obama. That same day, they had Mary serve them papers. The next day, Mary had to go to court. Steve showed up at court. He said that Mary was making a mockery of his name and she had violated the sealed documents. Mary never violated anything. I take full responsibility for that. Mary said, Essie, she had the courthouse. She said, these motherfuckers didn't lock me up. I said, lock you up, Mary. What are you talking about? She said, for all them videos. I said, I know they're not. I get on the phone. I call Judge Angela Tucker, who is a crooked black uh, um, judge. She never got on the phone. Okay. She didn't even get on the phone. She went and called Paget, the same lawyer who helped cover the child abuse up. Because you remember I said I got the papers from him. So if he had been a right lawyer, white lawyer, he should have went to the police on Steve Harvey and said, we have to do something because this celebrity abused his child. So then Judge Tucker wouldn't get on the phone with me. Next thing I know, dude, they called media takeout and they done got Mary put in prison. I mean, jail for 30 days. He got her locked up December the 17th and she was released on Steve Harvey's birthday. How insulting was that? And all I could do is call up to the jail, make sure that they, and they put her in jail, didn't even give her her medications. Mind y'all, she had a couple of mental breakdowns. The judge violated her civil constitutional rights knowing that she took medicine and she just threw her in jail. Mm. So Judge Tucker should be somewhere up under a jail because of that. She also um, violated Deion Sanders' wife, Pilar. She went up under that same disrespectful judge. And y'all, I sent Mr. Storm some pictures of Judge Tucker. She got mad because I said she like a crackhead. Oh, okay. That was then and this is now. I didn't say you were a crackhead. Don't put those kind of pictures out there. But they sent me little, little endo window saying, do she like a crackhead now? Because there's a warrant out for your arrest. Because what had happened was after Mary went to jail, I had to shut up. I could call and talk to Mary, but I was never her power of attorney in 2013. I was just a person. That's Judge Tucker. And there was a picture that they sent, and she got upset. You should show them another picture, too. That ain't the one she like a crackhead on, but we'll let her stay on that one. So she had an attitude behind that. And ever since then, this woman has had a personal vendetta because I stood for Mary. And maybe my mouth is blunt. Maybe that was not the right word to use. But you went in the media and y'all tried to make Mary look crazy. Then you went to the media after you locked Mary up and said I was a co-conspirator and extortionist. And they said Essie Berry, a.k.a. Essie Alexander, a.k.a. Essie Berry, whatever. All of was a.k.a. to make me look like I was some type of criminal. And from 2013 to 2017, until I met Geneva and went through all this in Tasha K2, I had to shut up. I had to know that this dude had beat his son. I had to know that he lied about his divorce. I had to know that he was married to Mary still and married to Marge at the same time because you signed a piece of paper. You were still dividing assets. They were dividing assets between Marge. I had to shut up through all that because Winton was not of age. But in 2017, I came back to state my claim okay. and say what went on. So Storm said, talk about Lori a little bit. Lori, if you go back, there's a book, Men Will Lie When the Truth Will Do. My girl Geneva got it on her page. But in this book, it says that Steve Harvey was with Mary, Margie, and the girl Terry that he was cheating with. Margie made reference in that book saying, that Steve Harvey was taking care of her child, which was Lori, in a, a, a private school. So why would Steve pay for Lori's private school and you still married to Mary? And this I would have been the early 2000s, correct? Correct. Correct. 2000. Yep, early 2000s. Correct. 
because Terry wrote the book in 2003. So she had already came to, to Terry before then. Okay. Mary said that she had found out one day that Steve was cheating. She got a letter in the mail. She was going to meet Steve and she found out that Steve had got a broad pregnant. And when he got her pregnant, she didn't say nothing. She turned around and she went to um, the airport to meet Steve. And that's what she found out about him. Mary said, I'm going to send you that picture, Storm. I got to find the picture. Mary sent me a picture of Winton and Lori like this together with a smile. She said, I always felt like Lori was actually Steve's child. So I'm going to find that picture so he can put those two together. So let's, let's, let's go back and hypothetically say. She said she met him in 87. She said then, you know, Jim Townsend went because she had already had, had Morgan. Margie did. And she was pregnant with her other son when uh, Townsend went to jail. Mm -hmm. Then she married the cousin. Okay. And that's supposedly supposed to be Lori's daddy, the cousin. Not not Jimmy Townsend's cousin. He married, she married a wood. And then she started going with the other wood. But one of the wood cousins was Lori's daddy. Allegedly. Now, if you will sleep with two cousins, then you will sleep with Steve Harvey behind them cousins back and get pregnant and pass that baby off as a wood. Especially, you, especially you, when especially when Steve has already said he met Marjorie years, decades ago and said, that's going to be my wife. He doesn't have enough money at that time for her to leave whoever she was dealing with at that yeah. time. But he always had his eyes out on her. But Steve said he ain't never talked to Marjorie again until decades later. But it it's believable because you already knew who she was. Watch this. The other night, Jimmy Townsend did a show with Make It Make Sense. Make it make, Jimmy said that Margie came to him and said, yo, Jimmy, you remember Steve from the club? What club and what year was that? That's what we need to know now. Let's put that timeline together. So if you are slutty enough to sleep with two cousins, you're slutty enough to go behind closed doors and sleep with Steve Harvey, get pregnant. Oh, my God, Steve, I think I'm pregnant. But pass it off as Darnell Woods and you figure out how to get up out of that. So what happened was, if this is what we're saying, because I ain't doing a ledge, I'm just hypothetically saying would make more sense to me. If Lori was truly Steve Harvey's child and he had been dealing with her all the time to cover it up, because let's take a DNA and make sure she she's um the wood kid then. That's what I would want to do. So let's do this. So, so nobody would know that Lori was his biological child. He put everybody in Harvey name so it wouldn't look suspicious. That's why he has been at Lori like he has. Could she actually be his biological child? Now, if you go back and you look at the references and the dates, and if you're asleep with two cousins, you're asleep with this dude because you'd have seen him on TV now behind closed doors. You know he's an upcoming comedian. He told you he's going to marry you one day, and he's paying for your child Lori's private school. Why is that? Why is that? Why would he be paying for Lori? And I guess at the time she was Lori Woods. But why would he have been paying for a little, little girl, Lori Woods, her private school, if that wasn't his kid, while he was still married to somebody else? So right. Steve's been paying a lot of people bills over the years. He, but not his own. But you but didn't pay for Brandy. You didn't pay that for Carly. Why you didn't pay for your twins? Ooh. Why you didn't help Marsha with her kids in the beginning? Marsha has been the only one who's been a queen in this and ain't said nothing. But you didn't start taking care of your kids in 2013. Y'all go back and look. When I call Steve out and I'm saying what I'm saying, you did not see anything about Steve kids before 2013. So then he had to come in and make it like it's a big makeshift family and we all get along. Let me go buy this daughter now. Let me go buy this son now. Let me go buy him. So everybody will believe that I am the man that I said that I am and no one will be able to stop and taint my whole credibility. It was already uh, tainted because you lied. But because that was a big facade. So that's why he put everybody in Harvey so nobody would truly know about Lori. That would make sense to me. But when Mary said that she always felt, yeah. Now you need to see them two smiling together. We're going to find when it was Lori and him smiling together. Mary said she felt like they were family. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm looking. I'm looking at them. That's Winston and, and I'm Lori. I'm the one with that smile on it. It's a smile. And, and they went to some kind of ball or something together. I think Winston sent her the picture. I got it in an email. But when I say they look alike, 
they look alike. That smile, if anything else. And maybe they ate enough together. Oh, no, that's his girlfriend. Maybe they ate enough together that they look alike. But because had Mary had dealt with him for so long and she knew about Margie, why could it not be true? I'm just saying. It's hypothetical. I will say I, now. I will say this. Um, in Steve Harvey's most recent interview with Shannon Sharp, he did say that the closest of all the kids was Lori and Winton. He said those two were thick as Steve's. It's just now, now what's kind of clicking in my head. He said that they are very, very close, and it it could almost kind of makes. I'm just saying, it makes okay. sense that they actually are half siblings, and you know, we don't know it, but. Okay, so if you think about it, what would make sense to put all them kids, because they ain't yours, they pretty much pushed them off to make sure that everybody got the Harvey name. Because if he had to just put Lori by himself, y'all wouldn't have questioned that? I would have. I would have said something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, see, this is how Steve tells the story. Steve says that, what what's, what's Marjorie's son's name? Morgan, what'd you say? Jason, is it? Uh, Jason, whatever. Jason. He says Jason came to him first and said, I want to be a Harvey. No, he didn't. And then Steve went and changed his name and then changed Lori's name. And so that's the way Steve tells it is that Jason, when he was a teenager, came to him and said, I want to be a Harvey. Now, would that be true? Because Jason know who his daddy is. I mean, I'm just saying, like. I'm saying, why somebody didn't ask Jimmy that on, on a thing? But I'm not going to. Now, I, I've talked to Jimmy. I talked to Jimmy quite a bit. So I'm going to let Jimmy tell his own story, but that ain't how that went. Pretty much, you think that man is a good daddy and he's just going to surrender his last name? Quite naturally, that man want his legacy of Townsend to go on too. You got enough Harveys on his end. Why would this man just sign his kid name over to him? Y'all pretty much forced him to. But we'll let Jimmy come back to that. Maybe he'll see this and he can answer that. You know, how did that come about? So I don't see... Jimmy's son to say, hey, dad, I want to be a Harvey today because it was the right thing to do because your mama persuaded you to. And then mm -hmm. we made everything look OK in the public eyesight because we knew all the foul things that Steve Harvey had done behind closed doors. That's why I respect Margie's daughter, Morgan, to the fullest, because she ain't with that okie doke. She's with what comes right. Forget it being my mama. This my daddy, too. She's looking at all the kids that Steve Harvey got. Her daddy sitting over here by himself, just got out of prison, and I did time for you. So you ain't loyal enough to stand by me and just say hello and have a peaceful conversation, and I did time for you? And then I got two kids by you, and this is what you give me? So they're used to breaking up Frank people's families and not caring about anybody or their position at the moment besides what they do, not with someone else. They worry about only what they can accomplish. They're not hurt, worried about hurting anybody else. And when they put those rumors out about me being a co-conspiracy and extortionist, I lost deals. I lost people. Um, my, the people who was going to do the reality show, they backed away. Nobody wanted to touch it because of Steve Harvey. And Mary said that they told Steve that nothing with me and him better not come up again together or they were going to shut down some of his shows. And when people want to sit up here, I don't want to get no credit for nothing, but I'm telling you what I did. In 2017, those child newspapers that y'all saw, I sent that to NBC. Do you think NBC going to call it and say, yo, Essie Berry sent me child abuse papers. They figured a way to get rid of Steve and they got rid of him. Because you got to really realize Steve was popular. He had a big show. Why would they get rid of him? Why would they take him off of a kid's show? Because I told them, I wrote them a letter saying, every time I see Steve, I'm in fear. Because if he did this to his own child and blood of his blood and flesh of his flesh, what is he going to do to the next kid? That's why he ain't got that kid show no more. Stop playing. Let's do this. Mm. Now let's let's look at this picture too. This is another picture of them on the side here. I mean, I can tell they're really close. I'm just saying what Mary said. It could be hypothetical that they're not sister and brother, but Mary said she always felt like Steve lied and that Lori was his daughter. It's possible. Anything is possible. That's, I want to take a DNA test. That's what I need. 
Cause no. like, cause, cause like Wood, we don't know Wood. We don't know him, anybody. We just go by what they said. But if you are trifling enough to sleep with two cousins, then you will sleep with Steve behind closed doors, get pregnant, get knocked up, say, oh my God, Steve, this may be your baby. Not saying it could have didn't, but I'm just saying that would make more sense. Cause why are you going to get a whole bunch of kids that you don't even know? And you just marry her and put them in, put them all in your name. So you just want to give your money away to everybody else. Oh, okay. And let me say this too. They have definitely done work online to scrub, to scrub their past. Because even when you put in Lori Harvey biological father, nothing but Steve comes up. Yeah. And they did that on purpose. And then too, like now, like, and they do that a lot. I didn't know if it's called scrub or whatever, but mm -hmm. like when I had told everything that I'm telling you now, they had a whole bunch of people. Steve paid a whole bunch of people to flag my page. What I know about YouTube now, I didn't know about then because I probably could have saved my channel. But my channel was all about everything I'm telling you. The court papers were even on there. I was bold enough to put them sealed documents up there. And I'm I'm in this case, you guys. They got me in this case. This case that you see is 199 whatever. Those court documents, they got me in this case. But they say I can't see the case. Well, Steve also is did a touch. Silk is impressive. Hmm. I was trying oh, to find they, a picture. They also got, got, they have a, a warrant for my arrest in Collins County. I've never been in Collins County. Why would there be arrest for me? Because that judge told, I mean, Steve asked the judge, well, scare Essie up, put a warrant for her arrest so we can, we can put her in jail. And that warrant was issued the same time I had my court hearing with Steve Harvey. So that mm. was blackmail. And they did it. I was at court one day against Steve Harvey because we're going to be winding up, but make a long story short, we'll come back. And they gave me a, a gag order and a, they served me in front of the courthouse and I was getting ready to go in against Steve Harvey. So right then he should have been arrested for blackmail and conspiring mm -hmm. to come against me to shut me up because I was going to tell the truth how you were sitting up here blackmailing me. I'm in a whole nother state. They'll go back to Texas because he know he can pay the judges off in Texas, but he didn't want to stand against me in the state of California. Now, is this the picture you're referring to? It's one like that. It's a little bit more. But see, you know what I'm saying? Look. But it was a little bit, um, they had their heads together. But, I mean, they got a similarity, y'all. And that's my girl, Geneva. Now, I have to say, Geneva was the only blogger on this whole internet when I came at Steve that rolled with me the whole way. In the beginning, when I came back in front of Steve in 2017, I gave the story to Tasha K. But then Tasha K blew up on the internet and then Steve started threatening her and she ran away. That's okay. No, that's not Steve. No, that's no. uh, mm -mm. uh that's, that's that, that, that other picture you show. Yeah, who was that one of? So Geneva was trying to, she was showing um the Wood brothers, but at the end of the day, to me, Lori don't look like that dude. No, nah, she really don't. And shout out to my girl Geneva, you guys. If y'all want to see some of the stuff from 2017. When they were blackmailing me, going at me, threatening me, a lot of that, you could check it out on Geneva's Closet. Uh, is this Almost, it here? Oh, this may. No, but that's still a look at them, y'all. Look at them. They don't you know, The more I'm looking at it, it's possible. Because people, people got because they do they at the end of the day they they would have the same father and different mothers and that's correct, correct. They, they could be they could be half siblings they could be and they've been messing around since how long oh because because margie said in 2003 I mean, the girl wrote the book in 2003 so like you said it had to be the early 20s or the late 90s this girl was a baby and she was in private school and steve was paying for her private school it says that in the book Mm. And Margie said that he was paying for that's another one. See what I'm saying? You know what? I'm believing it more and more. That would make sense. Why would you put all them kids in your name? Mm. Okay, let's move on from that. But I'm 
I'm I'm gonna find that picture that Mary sent me so you can see that picture, that smile. She said the smile gave her away. Now, why you why uh, why you looking for that? What what okay? Uh, Because I got I got some questions about these why these ex-wives. Why did why did Steve and the first wife get a divorce, Marcia? Because he found she found out that Steve was cheating with Mary. Ah. And if you go back and look at the paperwork, it's gonna tell you that. I sent you the court documents. Mm -hmm. So, um, Marcy, I, I don't know who filed. I think she may have filed. I'm not sure who filed first. You got the court documents. I think she filed, but she had found out she was pregnant while Mary was messing with Steve. But Mary said that she didn't know that Steve was married at the time. So that stuff about him being homeless, he never was homeless. I don't know why people keep saying that. He always had a woman that he could run to. <laughs> I'm just saying, you, know, you ain't got no home, right? But you got a woman that you can go run to. You know what I'm saying? So you really ain't homeless. Oh, you ain't got a home for yourself. But you can go to Terry. You can go to Margie. You can go to Mary. You can go to Marsha. It, Papa was a rolling stone. Everywhere he laid his head was his own. Good right. Lord. Okay, so he cheated on Mar. He was cheating on Marcy, then got with Mary. Right. And then start cheating on Mary when he got with Marjorie. Yep. So he he don't never shut one door before he hopped to the next. Right. He just moves on. Right. Right. I was gonna send you a, a Instagram message, but I'm gonna wait and we're gonna talk about that later. Okay. Even though all this has been transpiring, we still got a lot to go. I got messages going back and forth talking with this dude, Steve Harvey. I know mm. he don't want me to put the messages out. You know what I'm saying? Because he talk about his wife on there a lot. He talk about Margie. He talk about his lawyer, Ricky. He talk about some of the things he want to do. He wants me to trust him, but I didn't. And But I started to see you that time. I say, if Storm says, he'd be like, damn, that would have been hot tea. Because I ain't going to lie. I was talking kind of ratchet on there myself. Because I want to see how far he would try to go with me as far as his mentality was concerned. Because what I learned is he's a narcissist. I never knew what a narcissist was until all this transpired and go went on. So in 2017, when all this started taking place and I came out telling what Steve Harvey had done, I saw parts of him that I never even knew existed. You know, him lying, him being a con, him trying to be someone he's not. And then when I became Mary POA, so I was Mary Harvey's power of attorney in 2017. She filed a $60 million lawsuit, murder of the soul, because a doctor had diagnosed saying that Steve had did so much wrongful to Mary mentally that he murdered her soul. So he never want her to speak because she know where all his dirty secrets is. And that's why he's trying to side with me because he don't know what Mary has told me and what she didn't tell me. You see what I'm saying? So quite naturally, anybody that came with Mary, he would try to shut them up. So the whole time when Mary filed that lawsuit, you guys, in 2016, he kept going against Mary and trying to get her back out there in Texas and put her in jail. I called down to the courthouse because that same doctor who said murder of the soul, she went to the courthouse. I said, if Steve locked Mary up, I'm going to have you, him, and all your asses in jail within 24 hours. So your best bet is to make sure that Mary don't get locked up if she make it to her next court hearing because he was trying to put her in jail. Judge Tucker and, and her lawyer was down there in the face and Judge Tucker was like, you better shut up. You know I can lock you up. Why did you file this lawsuit? You don't care about Winton? So y'all still blackmailing this lady to the day using Winton as a scapegoat. So in 2017, I'm telling y'all that Steve Harvey was at the courthouse with Judge Tucker and Mary in Texas. Mary sued Steve in California. They tried to make Mary come back to Texas and put her in jail in Texas in 2017. Mary mm. went to Texas and say, here I am. But Mary knew I was on the sideline and I put all them damn papers out there. If you think you're going to put her in jail and punk her again, like he done done for years. So they let it walk. They kept threatening her. And when we finally got to the judge in 2017, they had scared her so bad. She just got quiet and didn't say nothing. They had went out there so many times, but I could never tell the judge that we were being threatened behind closed doors, 
Steve kept trying to come at us. I mean, and when he came, he don't just come for you. He come for your children. He come for your grandchildren. They will go with everybody to try to destroy you and to scare you into silence. He came after Geneva. He gave Geneva a gag order. He gave Tasha K one. Like he was trying to shut everybody up that was connected to me because he know I know where all y'all skeletons is. And it's up here now. I don't need none of that paperwork to tell what went on in that court case. But what I would say is that they divorce case in Collins County, Texas need to be opened up. Judge Angela Tucker need to be in a, under investigation. Bobby Edman, the attorney at law, need to be under investigation. And Ricky Anderson, attorney at law, need to be up on investigation. And anybody who conspired to do this and allow child abuse to go on, Steve trying to molest this lady's baby, and then sit up here lying and trying to set people up for crimes that he committed, they all should be up under prison right now. Mm, now, now, just so we don't, just so we don't forget, what was the beef between Steve and his twins, the twin girls? It, I don't even think it was really a beef. What it was, he wasn't paying child support. Go back and look at them court documents. I sent you Marsha's court documents. You show in the court documents that Steve Harvey was still, she was still fighting Steve for child support in 2013. His twins are halfway grown now. So why don't you think that your twins going to feel some kind of way that you didn't show them the same kind of love that you showed Lori? What is so special about Lori and she's another man's child that you can't show these kids the same thing that you done show Lori? Why is that? So quite naturally, your daughter's going to feel some kind of way because you play a game. So you trying to kiss up to Margie to make her happy with Lori, but you're going to say, forget your own children. That's what the beef is. And he never paid child support. He never saw about them. That's why they were angry. And in 2013 is when he started trying to be a father because he knew he had been exposed and he didn't know how long this lie would go before he didn't look like the role model father that he lied, lied and said he was. And I don't care if he was on Shay Shay, Nay Nay, Play Play or whatever. That was something just to camouflage everything that's going on now with him. He wanted to get on somebody platform that was more credible who could hold him up to heights. So I wonder mm. how y'all feel now. Now that knowing that there is a true police report that exists for child abuse and any other report that I say abuse, I can prove it. I'm not going to just say it. So he never mm. took care of his children, point blank, simple. And that, they were upset about that. And, that. and that's what it is. And I'm even looking now from um, and like I said, this will all be available on Patreon for the people that's watching. Uh, even though it's technically <laughs> public record, I technically don't have to blur it. But I'm seeing here. That at one point, Marcia had to uh, get a court order to have Showtime at the Apollo say, you, you're not paying him until he pays his child support. And I didn't know they could do that, but. You could put a lien. He's an actor. And that, that wasn't even a lawsuit. That was a divorce case. That wait, wait, wait. So was the people at Showtime the, at the Apollo going to help him transfer some funds so he wasn't going to have to pay? Yeah, I don't know what he had doing. All I know is that he, so supposedly he took, and when I read those papers, that he had Mary moving money for him. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So Marcia never got all her child support and stuff that she was supposed to get because he was too busy trying to take care of other families and he wasn't trying to take care of the family that he had. So why wouldn't the kids be angry? And Marsha just sitting up here like, it's okay. The first wife. Mm. So the first wife, they married February 14th, 1981. Mm -hmm separated august 20th 1990 and when he said he met margie 1987 okay oh you know what he sure did meet her in the, in the 80s mm -hmm. he was he was slanging dick to everybody everybody and everything and i think he got with mary in 93 all the way up into 2003 dang Damn. now you said he got with Mary in 93? I think 93. Something like that. So this motion didn't even go through until 1993. Yeah. And Mary, I mean, Mary said she was seeing him because she said she didn't know. Marsha was pregnant with Steve's son. The first wife was pregnant with Steve's son. Brock and Mary Jr. was dealing with him. And Mary said Steve mom called and said, how you going to marry Steve? And he already married. So that's how Mary found out that the first wife was involved. This is just, this is very messy. This is very messy. It is.
So oh, okay, so 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 let's let's move on a little bit. What was okay. your relationship with Tasha K? <laughs> you know, I had to ask about that. Okay, so when everything went on with Steve Harvey and I decided to come back and try to get my name out to tell what had happened, um, she contacted me and wanted me to wanted to do Mary's story. At first, we was going to let her do Mary's story, but Mary felt like Tasha was a drunk and a liar, so she didn't want to do it. And she also didn't like that statement um, Tasha K made about her being the dark, ugly wife. She put a picture of Mary up there. She put a picture of Margie and she had the nerve to call Mary ugly, but she should have looked in the mirror herself. Cause I know you're trying to call my ugly. I just don't even know why she said that. So Mary took offense by that and she didn't want to do anything with Tasha K. Wait, so wait, we're going we to we show it. We're going to show it. So people know you're not lying. She published that video six years ago and it actually has 937,000 views to this day. She tired it might be another one though. It's one. It's one about a, a a trainer. No, that's the one about the ugly wife. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It says, "As Steve, I divorced my dark skinned wife for my light skinned mistress." Oh, she changed the title on that because that did used to say ugly somewhere. Yeah, else. exactly. So Mary didn't like that, and so I decided because Tasha K was like, "Look, I need this interview." I've got like 60,000 subscribers. If I go to 40, it'll put me on the hit and it'll put me on the map. She said, Miss Berry, please give me this. She said, I'm going to be standing up for women. I'm going to be fighting with people whites. I want to do that and make a difference. I believed her. So I said, okay. Get houses, our cars, and everything. And there's a paper trail to that. Yeah. Uh, you're, not ner you're not nervous about what she told you. You believe her, correct? Well, she had to read. This is somebody that I'm very close to. I've been close to her for years, so she's very intertwined in this network. You know, of these, you know, like Ricky Smiley, all of these people, Tommy, Bob Jordan. She, she intertwined with it all, so she worked and listened in her conversations. You know what I'm saying? Like private conversations, but she can't go on record and say it because, you know what I'm saying? She, when she worked for them, she had to sign, you know, agreements not to share what they were talking about when she heard certain things. But basically, she confirmed everything that we were saying. She said back, my sister's in the car. You know, she was right there like, oh, shit. <laughs> Anybody saw any of it? I know they have, though. with her and then I taped it on my end and she got upset about that which I don't care because it's my I could tell your ass don't put it out you ain't signing that with me what are you talking about but I'm not like that if I sit on your page I'm gonna sit on your page but why are you getting offended that I'm gonna put it on my page so you could get all the views off my story and I don't say nothing so then we went back and forth for a moment and then she contacted me one day and she was real upset because Stephen started threatening her to take down the footage that she had talked about with me. And then after that, something else came up 
And I may still got the email where she sent me the paper for them telling her to shut up and don't say nothing. After that happened, I told Tasha K, look, if anybody come to you, come back to me. I can prove everything I'm saying. I'm really not worried about Steve. M. But she was just building her channel. And believe it or not, I gave her Mary's lawsuit. So that's how Tasha K channel went really viral. I was at the courthouse. I said, when I get through with the court papers, I kept my word with Tasha. I called her from the courthouse and gave her the court number. Me and TMZ got into it because they tried to say they broke the story. I said, y'all lying. Y'all didn't break the story. I gave it to Tasha K. I defended Tasha K and got into it with TMZ. And knowing that I could have just shut up and let TMZ roll with it. They would have gave more publicity. But because I'm an honest person, I said, y'all lying. I gave it to TMZ. So TMZ was pissed after I did that, but it was the truth. I didn't give you the story first. I gave it to Tasha K. And then mm. it just went viral. And I gave her Mary's lawsuit. And that's how that's what put Tasha K on the map. But what I didn't like is she didn't keep her word. She then, after I done gave her the, the whole rights or whatever I told her, she said, Well, I don't keep dealing with people after I do a story. I just go head on. That's not what you told me in the beginning. So now you ain't just a drunk, you a liar too. And that bothered me. And then I, I'm very blunt, so I'm sorry, but it is what it is. And if you get confused, Tasha K will never sit on the same platform. You know why? Because she don't have enough guts to. And don't get on this internet, sit up here running your mouth, talking to a video, and I ain't there. Put me on the fucking mic with you if you're going to come for me. Because if you come for me, you can send for me, and I'm coming. But you better know what you're doing when you put me on the mic. That's mm. why she limit what she says about me, because you are no match for me. Because you sit up on a mic and get drunk and do all that other stuff, you still not not truthful and all i'm saying if you was truthful you wouldn't have got sued by carly b <laughs> so the things that she has done over the years like she said yeah when i get this i'm gonna wipe this paper with carly b and i'm gonna wipe my ass with it i said that same paper carly b gonna take that paper and wipe your ass with it and Car i mean your face with it and that's what carly b did so you sit up here trying to come for somebody you should be worried about your own stuff on your own platform but you built your platform the most credible story that ever been given to tasha k probably was my story because i came with black and white and then and being real let me put this out here my face Ain't never been on nobody else's platform. You might have took a video and put it on your platform. Besides your storm, this is the second platform that I've ever been on in these eight years and showed my face. So that tells you that I got mad respect, okay? So, and I didn't like to, like, you was working with Tasha K, but it seemed like she was trying to corrupt you. She wanted you to look like she looked. Y'all two different people. And then when she helped somebody, you go back and help them. Then you turn around and you destroy them and you tear them down. That's not credibility. That's still telling, tearing down your fellow man because you want to make a joke. You want to think something funny or you want to sit up there because you drunk on a mic. You see what I'm saying? Get real. Get real with yourself. That's why now you ain't got a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out and somebody finna take the window that you throwing it out of because you didn't stay loyal to the game. <laughs> no lies told. No lies told. I am, because when, when this video comes out, I'm sure it, I'm sure that part will be clipped and sent to her. And I'm, I'm very curious if she will invite you down to yeah, do a separate face. I mean, not. she's already done Jimmy Townsend and she got mad at him when he did the interview with Lionel B. He gave the exclusive actually to Lionel B years ago. Mm -hmm. So people just forgot about it, but she got mad about that. But I mean, you got your paperwork, you got the videos, you got the pictures, you got the facts, and I think you can match her energy. At the end of the day, without Essie Berry, there would be no fucking Tasha K. That's what I'm saying. Because yeah, without Mary yeah. Harry's story, you would not have went viral because you was too busy on online putting on different color wigs and big ass glasses and stuff, trying to make yourself known and when nobody watching you. But then I liked it something about Tasha K because she sounded like she wasn't scared. She voiced what she said. But at the end of the day, she owed me more respect than what she gave me because of some fact I didn't have to do nothing. You was a drunk blogger on the internet, sitting up here getting drunk, begging for a story. And then you gonna come and act like I did something? And when she did the interview with Jimmy Townsend, Essie Berry, what was that about? Essie Berry what? Speak when you spoke it to. Because you called my name. So why did you call my name? Because I was on your brain? I'm embedded in your motherfucking brain. Oh, what? Yeah. And, she, and, and now that I'm thinking about it, I'm wondering if maybe editing took out whatever because they heavily edit their videos. 
I wonder if editing took out whatever she said. I put you on the map. I gave you Mary Harvey's story. But then one day, something happened, and she called to say, Essie, why you got to beef with me? I just started dragging her. Tonight. And she responded back. I'm good. I just woke up and got you. Uh, you are looking at the cell way. phone of Essa uh, Berry. Essa, I didn't know me and you had a problem. The problem with me, we didn't really have a problem, TK. Like, I had been sitting back for a long time. Just listen time, to me. And I, I ain't going to lie, I watched you for a long time. Even I'm moving a lot, Joe, you guys, you but I'm and sorry. All that came about. Tasha, it wasn't your responsibility, but I thought you was a rider. You watched this nigga drag me, and it don't matter now, but I know you did. And people that saw how style Steve Harvey was, and you told me in the beginning that you were there to fight for justice. For it's all audio. And TK, like, I don't care what you're doing the rest of the people on there, but then I'm like, you better than that, going out to people, kids, and talking shit like that, TK. Yeah, you ain't even about wait it. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Essie, let me slow you down, because I haven't talked to you in almost, like, what, six, seven months now? So, we're... No, it's been two years, almost. It ain't been, it ain't been that two years. Essie, that's, I still got your number. This is your recent number. You change your number all the time. I, I never thought, I, I didn't talk to you last year, TK. When? Essie, you didn't call me that one time. It's, okay, listen, okay, that's besides the point. But the last time we talked, I was under the impression that you and I are good. So now you're upset because I didn't keep doing Steve Harvey Listen videos. to this. And so I'm not that I'm not just upset about that, TK. Like, you know, when people ask me, like you when people ask you questions, you know, like I, I, I see you in the windows, like you said, no, you know, I didn't even know about the hundred thousand subscribers and all that shit till you came to me on that. Then people come saying, Well, did you do this or did you do that? It's just the principle of it, TK. What are you, what are you talking about, 100,000 subscribers? What are you talking about, principle? I don't get... What is your... TK, when I first came here, you didn't even have 100... The point of it is, when you came, you said, look, I've, I've been on my channel six months. I'm trying to get my That's channel up there. I need to go for 100,000 subscribers. Mary Kay is can do real that, rude I did and that reckless for with you. her mom. So you said on one of your videos, after you do that, me and you ain't friends. You and then you said this shit now. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and get ready to cut this off, all this profanity that she's going to be using. Oh, unnecessary. So, if you want to check it out, go to Tasha K. Page Online with Tasha, y'all. Because if I had a beef with you, I would have called and told you. I just didn't talk to you no more because you a kid up under me. I don't play with people, children. I don't have time for that. I'm mm. 53 years old. But then she was taping me, not knowing the same person I'm on this video. I'm on and off the camera the same way. I can get lit either way. I'm not a phony. If I cuss you out in front of your face, if I talk about you, I'll tell you in your face. If you don't want to hear it, that's fine. But I will. And I didn't know she was taping me. So that didn't make sense. So I would like to know, too, what is the real beef? Because you know match for me. What you upset about? Because I gave you Mary Harvey's story. Or then she went on the internet and lied and said that I said her baby was ugly. I would never talk about no child's baby, nobody's kid. Do I think Tasha K is ugly? Yeah. I think she's ugly in her spirit. And I think she's like a, 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 like a nigga to a degree because of her mentality and her face and shit. You know what I'm saying? So she be coming there about like she just high profile thug, but she's really ugly. In the beginning, I thought she was a very beautiful person until I saw the real side of her. And then I just thought she was ugly because you can be pretty as you want to be. But if you're ugly on the inside and I don't care about none of Tasha K subscribers, y'all better stay over there with that because I don't address stupid stuff. It is what it is. A lot of people scared to say what they feel about Tasha K. Tasha K is nothing to me. She was a person that I put her on a map. And what I do notice, all these bloggers try to keep Essie Berry name out your mouth. Okay. The how's that working out for you? Because at the end of the day, Storm, I put my mouth where the I put my money where the mouth is. My mouth where the money is. Yeah. I've given you documents on everything. Sure so don't sit up here, came like y'all the first ones who exposed Steve Harvey. Essie Mary was the first, and I didn't know it. When I came back, everything changed, and Steve started losing. Go back and look at the dates. And go back and look at the times when Steve Harvey lost everything he lost behind coming for me. Because after we did Mary and she shut that case down in 2017, I sued Steve Harvey March 8, 2018. And after that, my life became a living nightmare. It was horrible. 
He violated me in so many ways, you guys. I never would even thought it would exist. I sued Steve Harvey for um, mental, emotional um, duress, stalking, and something else was on there. But just to know that I sued him, and when I sued him, they started threatening me. They started threatening my family. He started threatening my grandbabies. They would put pictures of my grandbabies up there. They would mock me how I was abused back in the day, showing my face all beat up and stuff. It was horrible. I got over 2,000 text messages where they text me, threatening me, my life, and my family. I never have experienced something like that before in my life, ever. And, and, you, have shared, and you have shared some of that with me. I mean, showing your house, your mom's house, like also all sorts of things that would give a person nightmares um, and should and should have been in jail behind you know what i'm saying yeah and, and and one day i know i saw tasha k on the mic and she said something about me being um harassed or whatever she said it quickly and then that video went away so it told me that she saw this the woman that i gave my whole story to you saw me being broken and you didn't even try to save me and all you wanted was a story i just wanted justice and you couldn't even do nothing for that that's why i ain't got no respect for her for what mm. is it true she was gonna out winston harvey out winston harvey on what on, on messing around with boys. Yeah. She she came to me with that. Um, I ain't seen Went to Kiss No Boy, and neither has she. She said that somebody was in a chat room and they saw it went in a gay chat room. Hell, I might be in a gay chat room. They said I was gay at one time, too. And I love men. I ain't never been with no woman. But you ain't know who dingling I was sitting on, so that makes me gay? That don't make me nothing. You True. dig? I just don't tell you my business because it's not your business. for my business for you to know. But Winter was in the chat room and she called me and she was going to out Winter and try to say that Winter was gay. And I told her, when you come and do that, you're not going to have a nice day. Winter is off limits. He has nothing to do with this because you look gay. I could say you gay. You ain't never lit coochie. I'm just saying. So you ain't trying to come for somebody else and you sitting up his party doing the same thing behind closed doors. Matter of fact, why were you in the chat room and knew he was in the chat room? She couldn't even answer that. Why was you in the chat room? How did you get there? Oh, you just in the gay chat room looking. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's going out, people, now. So you're going to out Winton because he in the gay chat room and you in the same gay chat room. What was you doing in there? Chatting? <laughs> right? Good point. Good point. Like, how did you get She wouldn't even know he was in the chat room if she hadn't been in there. That's, that's a good point. She didn't like that question. I asked her. She couldn't answer it. <laughs> she started stuttering. I figured you would. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why that story never came out. Yeah, she let that go. Yeah, because it. I told her, you're going to look stupid too because you was in a chat room. So how you going to explain you was in a chat room? Oh, so you just went in a, a, a chat room of gay people looking for Winton? You was in there looking for something yourself. And let's, and let's talk about this too. I want to uh, personally attest that Essie Berry and I, we had this same conversation in 2020. Yeah. And your story has not changed. Because I'm not a liar. She has no reason to lie. No I, you provided like proof, evidence, all that. But I just, I'm just, you know how like you talk to people and sometimes a story story changes. You're like, wait a minute, that ain't what you told. But I remember mm -hmm. verbatim, we had this exact same conversation in 2020. Um, you know, I never yeah, I know. told Kasha Kane that I talked to you because it was none of her business. But very same, very same conversation. Yep. And if you go and listen when Geneva, when I did interview Geneva, that's one thing she gonna always say. Essie will never change her story. She has stayed with it. Because you know why? There's no such thing as a successful liar. You understand? Now, all these things that I've said, including molestation, it's out on the internet right now on my page. If I was lying, why did Steve sue me? Because he know that he can't. Because when you come get me, it's going to be atomic bomb because all y'all are dirty secrets. It's just going to come on out. So the best thing they could do is pretty much leave me out of the scenario because if not, you're going to have problems. And now I am so happy that the whole world know because if he tried to arrest me now, it's going to go bigger than I ever thought it was. I mean, I've been in handcuffs before. Ain't nobody scared to go to jail. What's that? 
It's going and you'll be right back out, but it's going to explode. It's going to be everywhere. Now, let me ask you this. Why do you have a warrant for your arrest in Texas? Call Steve and ask him because I want to know, too. <laughs> Please, can, can somebody call this nigga? Can somebody call the court? Can somebody call his neck bone ass attorney? Can somebody call and please tell me why there's a warrant for my arrest? Because I told the truth what they did with this mess with Mary Harvey's case. Because they know if that paperwork come out that they're going to jail. And they thought because they put a warrant against me that I was going to be scared. They said they wanted me to pay a $1,500 bond because I didn't show up for a court appearance. Which they put the court appearance on the same day that I was in court against Steve Harvey in California. Mm. So if I paid $150 for the $1,500 bond. That's saying I'm guilty. I'm going to do like Tasha K say now. Y'all can take that shit and wipe it on your face. And you know what I'm saying? Because you're not going to blackmail me for a warrant. And, and I'm not, I haven't been there. So if I had to pay that 10%, that would have looked like I was guilty. I didn't care about that warrant. So if you know you ain't guilty, why would you pay for a warrant? I ain't even locked up. And you think I'm going to pay a warrant bonds for 10% because you got a $1,500 warrant on me because you try to put me in jail for Steve Harvey? That warrant will be on me for the rest of my life. And I will be talking about Steve Harvey for the rest of my life until they take me out of it or he get arrested. The judges get arrested. Somebody's going to get arrested behind this before it's all over with because Judge Tucker then her career next year, I think she, that's the end of her. And every case yeah. that she's been up on, I'm going to ask for it to be reopened because I got some people working on some things right now. So when they thinking that they're getting away with anything, they're really not. You never, you, you know, one thing my grandmama always said was done in the dark will come to the light. Yes. And um, she told me basically don't do nothing that you're going to be ashamed of later. And I've, I've I've lived by that. Like whatever I do, just own it, uh, because it's gonna come out. So I, you should. So let me ask you this: Go. Is it true that Steve Harvey tried to get Mary Harvey to sleep with Bill Cosby? Can we tell them the Steve and Bill Cosby story? The, the Mary show. said. <laughs> I'm gonna say Mary said. Okay. So Mary said that she went over to Bill Cosby's house. Uh, it's storm show. Hey, it's storm show.